With the introduction of more advanced fighter jets like the F-14, F-16, and MiG-29, the gameplay dynamic of Top Tier has drastically shifted to include a tighter focus on avionics and weapons systems. In particular, radar and longer-range radar-guided missiles have become the primary weapons of choice for the opening engagement of ARB, and will continue to become primary weapons of choice in the future. In this video, I aim to educate the average player on how to most effectively avoid or combat them. It is worth noting the current state of the game and how it relates to the gameplay loop at top tier. At the time of making this video, update 2.23 Apex Predators has added two more top competitors to the 11.0 Plus cluster, the F-16 and the MiG-29. However, relating to the topic of this video, most of the platforms fielding powerful radar-guided missiles belong to America, Sweden, and France. In addition, the strongest platforms belong to America, with the F-14 Tomcat fielding the most powerful radar in-game, in addition to the longest range missile, which is also cut above the others with its active radar seeker head. As such, one of the easiest things to do in preparation for an ARB match is to take a quick look at the leaderboard to get a feel for which nations are on each team. For now, if America is on the other team, it is worth being more attentive for incoming radar missiles at long range. Most aircraft at the top tier come with two basic things, a radar and a radar warning receiver. The radar emits radiation which reflects off targets back into the radar dish. The radar will detect those reflections and display a contact on the radar panel at the corresponding range and heading of the detection. On radars with IFF or identification friend or foe, hostile radar contacts will be displayed with either a single bar or a dot depending on the radar mode or friendlies will be displayed with a thin horizontal line beneath that bar or dot. Different radar modes will be discussed briefly in the next section of the video. A radar warning receiver, or RWR for short, is a device installed on an aircraft which will alert the pilot to any radar emissions currently bouncing off of, or pinging, their aircraft. In War Thunder, typical search radars will show up on most RWRs as pulses on the rim of the display while a solid lock will show a constant ping with a dashed line drawn to the center of the display. You can distinguish between the two through audio cues, with each tone being different. It is worth noting there are different kinds of radar warning receivers modeled in War Thunder, each with varying degrees of complexity. Some show precisely what direction the emission is coming from, others show roughly what position the emission is coming from, and others might only be able to see backwards. To this extent, some aircraft have more useful RWRs than others. It is worth knowing the features of yours. It is also worth noting that radar warning receivers have a blind spot in the shape of a cone approximately 45 degrees above and below the wings of the aircraft. If an emission falls into those dead zones, either through maneuvers or abandoned shooting from too high above or below the aircraft, the radar warning receiver will not detect the emission and thusly will not produce a warning tone. There are several different radar types in-game that have different strengths, weaknesses, and general usage scenarios. The primary types include SRC, SRCPD, SRCPDV, TWS, MTI, ACM, and HDN. SRC mode is the standard radar mode for most early jets. It is the barest form of modern radar, which, while featuring good long-range detection capabilities compared to other modes, is unable to filter out ground clutter or chaff. The radar sweeps an area in front of the aircraft to detect any reflections from airborne targets. SRC is most useful when looking up and shooting up, although it can maintain a good lock on the horizon at altitude and, in some cases, maintain a lock whilst looking down. It is usually next to useless at low altitudes, although strong enough radars can burn through ground clutter at close enough ranges. SRC PD mode, and its relative PDV mode, 
are a form of SRC. However, unlike the basic scan performed by standard SRC, Pulse Doppler Mode scans for any parallel motion relative to the ground. This gives it the ability to look down, shoot down. However, its main limitation is that Pulse Doppler radars are unable to detect any perpendicularly traveling targets, which means a locked aircraft can notch the radar. This will be discussed in a moment. The only difference between PD and PDV is the display. PD displays the target's range and heading on the scope, while PDV instead displays the target's velocity and heading. PD is generally more useful than PDV, although PDV can be used to distinguish aircraft from missiles, with aircraft being closer or slower on the scope when compared to missiles. TWS, or Track While Scan Mode, is a highly useful addition to radars. TWS allows an aircraft to acquire a soft lock on a target while the aircraft continues its normal scan pattern. This soft lock is not as accurate as a continuous or hard lock, and will refresh the target's location every time the radar sweeps over it as opposed to constantly. It is generally easier to shake a soft lock than a hard one, but soft locks have the advantage of not alerting the target to a lock. While you are unable to fire a semi-active radar homing missile, like an AIM-7 Sparrow, without a hard lock, soft locks can be used to shoot active radar homing missiles and loosely guide them to a target. Currently in-game, TWS locks are strictly limited to Pulse Doppler modes. This might change in the future. MTI, or Moving Target Indicator, is a rudimentary alternative to Pulse Doppler radar. To put it simply, MTI uses two radar pulses in quick succession to filter out any stationary radar reflections, like the ground, and highlight moving reflections, like other aircraft. It is most useful at low altitudes, as there it performs better than basic SRC. However, it is generally considered an inferior form of its Pulse Doppler counterpart and appears to be functionally identical in-game. ACM mode, or Air Combat Maneuvering mode, is effectively a dogfighting scan mode. Rather than scan a large area in front of the aircraft with sweeps and display reflections on the scope, it scans a tight area, typically a cone, at a shorter range in front of the aircraft until it finds a reflection, at which point it acquires a hard lock on that target. Note that IFF does not affect ACM mode, and it will lock whatever target it finds first. ACM mode does not indicate a radar type, like Pulse Doppler or MTI, just a scanning mode. You can have different variations of ACM including ACM MTI, ACM PD, and even ACM IRST if the aircraft has IRST, or infrared search and track, capability. Some aircraft can also change the ACM scanning area. HDN, or head-on, is a new addition to War Thunder. You may notice that some Pulse Doppler radars have HDN tacked on at the end of the mode, and others do not. HDN denotes that the radar is only capable of detecting targets traveling toward the aircraft and not away. This is commonly referred to as a hot or a cold target, respectively. Pulse Doppler radars without the HDN modifier can see relative motion both towards and away from them, and thusly are typically more effective at maintaining a lock against defending targets. Do note, however, that some HDN radars are powerful enough to detect cold targets at close range or higher altitudes. I'm not entirely sure how this works, so I can't speak much to this. There are two ways to defeat radar-guided missiles. Either you defeat the offensive aircraft's radar, or you defeat the missile's radar seeker. Typically, it is more effective, and more common, to take the first option, as there is only one active radar-guided missile in the game. Additionally, semi-active radar homing missiles will typically self-destruct a few seconds after the launch aircraft loses a radar lock or the missile loses guidance. Building on top of this last section, there are a couple things to note regarding standard SRC and SRC PD radars that deal with missile guidance. Firstly, SRC radars do not stop guiding a missile upon being chaffed. If a missile is fired before the radar locks onto the chaff, the radar will essentially become a spotlight that illuminates a wide area in front of it. If the target is still bright enough, the missile will continue guiding towards it instead of going after chaff. Secondly, 
Just because pulse Doppler radars do not get tossed by chaff doesn't mean chaff is useless against them. Chaff can throw a seeker lock if the chaff's reflection is brighter than the target aircraft, opening the door to strategies I will show now. Let's take this scenario for example. We are flying directly head-on with an F-14 around 20 kilometers in front of us at a slightly higher altitude. We are well within his missile range. This is not a good position to be in, as his radar can easily detect us and guide his sparrow to our aircraft. A good rule of thumb is to never fly directly head-on against a bandit with radar-guided missiles unless you have the opportunity to shoot first or become a threat first. To avoid this Tomcat Sparrow, we will turn to hold him at our 2 or 10 o'clock. Upon seeing the launch, we will place him at our 3 or 9 o'clock. In doing so, we are flying directly perpendicular to his radar. If he is in pulse Doppler mode, we will be within its notch, causing him to drop his lock. The notch is a range of velocities in which pulse Doppler radars are not able to detect. The Sparrow will detonate shortly after losing a lock, assuming the lock is not reacquired quickly. We can also choose to hold him at our 3 or 9 earlier, to prevent him from acquiring a lock in the first place and thus forcing him to close distance into our effective range and into the merge. Sparrows and other semi-active radar homing missiles have a minimum effective range of about 2 to 3 kilometers, so it is reasonably safe to cut into the bandit at that range. Just be wary of any all-aspect infrared guided missiles they might sling at you. In this next scenario, the Tomcat is directly in front of us again, but this time it is beneath us as well. This is an even worse position to be in, as his radar is now looking up in the clear sky and giving the Sparrow a much cleaner signal to follow. Additionally, the Tomcat does not have to be in pulse Doppler mode to acquire a good lock, meaning it's not possible to defeat the missile with a simple notch. This time, we will place the target at our 3 or 9 again, start dropping chaff, and dive. If the missile does not go after the chaff, our last option is to begin flying slightly away and continuing to drop chaff intermittently in the hopes of throwing off the seeker. And finally, in our third scenario, the Tomcat is over 20 kilometers away and is going to launch a Phoenix at us. We will not have an RWR lock tone until the missile gets within about 14 kilometers of our aircraft, so it is key to spot the missile trail off in the distance before it gets too late. The Phoenix is not extremely powerful within about 14 kilometers, as any closer means the missile is usually too slow to follow extreme maneuvers. However, in this case, the Tomcat is launching around 20 to 25 kilometers away meaning our chances of outmaneuvering the missile are slim. Since the Tomcat is using a TWS PD mode, we must dive and attempt to notch to deny the Phoenix its initial guidance. However, this does not always work reliably, so it is a good idea to drop a chaff or two while in the notch to spoof the Phoenix. If the Tomcat launched from too far away, it is possible to run away from the missile and do some gentle turns to bleed the Phoenix's speed. If we only spot the Phoenix once it is within around 10 kilometers, the only thing we can do is dive, notch, and drop chaff in the hopes that the Phoenix will get decoyed. This does not always work, and the chaff will only work if the aircraft is in the notch and far enough away from the active seeker. The Phoenix is an extremely deadly missile against high targets at long range, so try not to be too high if a Phoenix is launched at you. The Phoenix thrives off of thinner air and higher speeds, and denying these advantages is a good way to defeat the missile. To wrap things up, I want to give a general overlay of helpful strategies that I use in almost every game of top tier ARB regardless of nation when it comes to defeating radar guided missiles. Number 1. When in doubt, dive. It doesn't hurt to have the extra airspeed, and leading the missile into thicker air will bleed off some of its energy. Additionally, the missile has more maneuverability at higher altitudes than your aircraft, so it is never a bad idea to level a playing field as much as possible by coming down to lower altitudes. Two. 
If you're being locked for more than a brief period, try to notch the lock and deploy a little chaff. It's rarely a bad idea to take some preemptive action, and notching with some chaff before you even know a missile is launched is a fantastic way to waste an enemy's missile, or at the very least, get you into a defensive posture early. 3. Avoid all head-ons with radar-guided missiles between 3 to 8 kilometers away. Within that range, there is a slim chance you can go defensive in time, so if you see a bandit with radar-guided missiles charging at you, get below him and quickly get into the notch to prevent the launch. And finally, number 4. Remember to listen to your radar warning receiver. It is your first line of defense and the first thing to let you know when something spooky is hitting you with radar from far away. It also doesn't hurt to look up or down from time to time since the dead zones might do you in. With all this said, I hope you enjoyed the video. It took a lot of effort to put all this together, so a like or even your subscription is greatly appreciated. If you have a question or other tips to give to your fellow pilots, feel free to leave it in a comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.